Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Skyrim. Last time we visited Heartwood Mill. This time we are going to progress the Companion's Quest, Blood's Honor, and clear out the Glenmoral Coven. So let's remind ourselves what's going on. As part of his quest to cure his lycanthropy, Codlack Whitemane has sent me to kill the Glenmoral witches and bring back their heads. Our objectives are to collect a Glenmoral witch's head and optionally to wipe out the Glenmoral witches. Naturally, we're going to wipe them out. And even though it says to only collect one head, I recommend you keep all of them for other quests. Eventually, Farkas and Vilkas will each want to cure their lycanthropy, and you will need a Glenmore Witch Head for each one. And, if you ever want to cure your own, you need one for that as well. I just recommend holding on to all of them. So, let's move in. You can see the first witch already. First, let's go back here. Let's break one lockpick and then open this novice locked chest. We saw our first Hag Raven. I remember right from Orphan Rock. Well, I hear a spider. If I remember right, as long as have a frenzy effect. They do. So as soon as I find an alchemy lab, I'll be able to get the fourth and final effect off human hearts. Good. The only loot in here is a couple of goat hides, according to UESP. this entire room, including the upstairs. And this place is organized pretty simply. There are four different tunnels. Each one is a dead end, and each one has a witch hiding back at the end. Well, let's start, after we clear things out up here, we'll start with the lower tunnel leading north. She 
goes. Oh yeah, that sometimes happens. Because the body disappears and respawns without a head. And it's get that freakish little glitch. No matter. Clear this room out. Barrel, basket, rock warbler eggs, briar heart. Chest. Ebony arrows, one garnet, and some gold. Pretty basic, simple little room. Alright. Two down, three to go. Let's do the lower west tunnel now. Two enemies in here. Frostbite spider. I guess it's a leveled creature. He gave us goat horns, that's awesome. With those, I only need 36 more. The Enchanting Skill Book, A Tragedy in Black, which is actually new. We haven't read this one. Oh. Take it off the book list. Enchanting's already at 100, so nothing happens, of course, but with that done, I have two free enchanting boosts left. There's one skill book left to find, and one quest to do. Alright. A Tragedy in Black, a folk tale from the time of the Oblivion Crisis. The Dramora looked on the young boy with disdain. He looked to be no more than 17 or 18, on the cusp of manhood. You, you have summoned me. Mother says I'm good with spells. Someday I'm going to be a wizard, maybe even archmage. And what would your mother know of magic, boy? She's a wizard. She's an enchanter at the Arcane University. Ah, another dabbler in the mystic arts. I'm certain she is barely mediocre. You shut up. I read the scroll. I get to tell you what to do. The Dramora was silent. Compulsion bound his voice. I want to know how to make a magic dress. I need it for her birthday. The Dromora's answer was more silence. You have to tell me. It's in the rules. Freed from the previous compulsion, the Dromora answered, First you need a soul gem. 
I happen to have one and would gladly give it to you for so noble a cause. Really? Why do I need it? With a hidden smile, the Dremora handed over the dull black gem. It is not enough to cast a spell upon an inert object. Magic requires thought, intent, will, and emotion. The soul powers the enchantment. The bigger the soul, the more powerful the enchantment. So how big is the one in this soul gem? Oh, that one is empty. You'll have to fill it. But it can hold the largest of souls easily. Do you know how to do that? No, the young man said sullenly. Let me show you. You cast a spell like this. The tendrils of the soul trap spell spilled from his fingers and surrounded the boy. The young man's eyes went wide. I didn't feel anything, he complained. How about now? The Dremora asked, plunging his talons into the youth's ribcage. His heart beat only once before it was pulled from his chest. Quickly, the Dremora snatched back the black soul gem, just as the youth died. His soul tried to flee, but was trapped by the spell and drawn into the gem. Only black soul gems can hold the souls of men and elves. Your mother obviously never told you never to accept a freely given gift from a summoned Dremora, he said to the corpse. You see, it breaks the conjuration, freeing the summoned from the summoner. Now let's go find your mother. After all, I have another black soul gem. I like that little story. Anyway, we've got some troll fat on the table here with the arcane enchanter. And <coughs> that's all. Now let's head to the Upper West Tunnel. Last one. There's a Namira's Rod I almost missed. even an iron ore vein in here. the last witch. Here we have a wooden bowl, three slaughter fish scales, and two slaughter fish eggs. There's the other one I almost lost. Now Glenmoral Coven has a bad habit of not clearing. I'll clear it with the console because it is a clearable location. So let's just set location cleared 191891 and there one more coven is cleared as it should be it hardly ever works correctly I don't know why but no matter we've cleared it no enemies left let's look around Inside the tent, we have two potions and a nightshade plant beside it. Inside the boss chest, 
and we've got some pretty good stuff. I like spell tomes. Too bad I already know Bound Sword. Two barrels, some empty wine bottles, bowls, two slaughterfish scales, slaughterfish egg. Let's get under the book, because one more egg and one more scale. And lastly, another new book. A destruction skill book called Horror of Castle Seer. Let me take this off the book list first. Now, if I look at free skill boosts for destruction, I have two remaining. There is one skill book left to find and one quest to do. Pretty basic. The Horror of Castle's Ear, a one-act play by Balof Kuhn. Dramatis Personae. Clavides, Captain of the Imperial Guard, Cyrodiilic. Anara, a Dunmer maid. Alus, a Lieutenant of the Imperial Guard. Argonian. Zolasa, a young Argonian mage. Late evening. The play opens in the interior great entrance hall of a castle in Scatha Nude, replete with fine furnishings and tapestries. Torches provide the only illumination. In the center of the foyer is a great iron door, the main entrance to the castle. The staircase up to the landing above is next to this door. On stage left is the door to the library, which is currently closed. On stage right is a huge suit of armor, twenty feet tall, nearly touching the ceiling of the room. Though no one can be seen, there is the sound of a woman singing coming from the library door. A loud thumping knock on the iron front door stops the woman singing. The door to the library opens, and Anara, a common-looking maid, comes out and hurries to open the front door. Clavides, a handsome man in imperial garb, stands there. Anara, good evening to you, Sergio. Clavides, good evening. Is your master at home? Anara, no, Sergio, it's only me here. My master, Sedura Kina Telvani Hordalf Zir, is at his winter estate. Is there something I can do for you? Clavides, possibly. Would you mind if I came in? Anara, not at all, Sergio, please. May I offer you some flynn? Clavides comes into the hall and looks around. Clavides, no thank you. What's your name? Anara, Anara, Sergio. Clavides, Anara, when did your master leave Scatha Nude? Anara. More than a fortnight ago. That's why it's only me in the castle, Sergio. All the other servants and slaves who tend to his lordship travel with him. Is there something wrong? Clavides. Yes, there is. Do you know an Ashlander by the name of Sul Karifa? Anara. No, Sergio. I don't know no one by that name. Clavides. Then you aren't likely to now. He's dead. He was found a few hours ago dying of frostbite in the Ashlands. He was hysterical, nearly incomprehensible, but among his last words were Castle and Zir. Anara, dying of frostbite in summertide in the Ashlands? Vec, that's strange. I suppose it's possible that my master knew this man, but being an Ashlander and my master being of the House of Telvanni, well, if you'll pardon me for being flippant, Sergio, I don't think they could have been friends. Clavides, that is your master's library? Would you mind if I looked in? Anara, Please, Sergio, go wherever you want. We got nothing to hide. We're loyal Imperial subjects. Clavides, as I hear, are all Telvani. Note from the playwright, this line should be delivered without sarcasm. Trust the audience to laugh. It never fails, regardless of the politics of the locals. Clavides enters the library and looks over the books. Clavides, the library needs dusting. Anara, yes, Sergio, I was just doing that when you knocked at the door. Clavides, I'm grateful for that. If you had finished, I wouldn't notice the space in the dust where a rather large book has recently been removed. Your master is a wizard, it seems. Anara. No, Sergio. I mean, he studies a lot, but he don't cast no spells, if that's what you mean by, wi by wizard. He's a Kena, went to college and everything. You know, now that I think about it, I know what happened to that book. One of the other Kenas from the college been round yesterday and borrowed a couple of books. He's a friend of the master, so I thought it'd be all fine. Clavides. This Kano, was his name Warvim? Anara. Could have been. I don't remember. Clavides. There is a suspected necromancer at the college named Kino Warvim we, we arrested last night. We don't know what he was doing at the college, but it was something illegal, that's for certain. Was that the Kino who borrowed the book? A little fellow, a cripple with a withered leg? Anara. No, Sergio, it weren't the Kino from yesterday. He was a big fellow who could walk, so I noticed. 
Clavides, I'm going to have a look around the rest of the house, if you don't mind. Clavides goes up the stairs and delivers the following dialogue from the landing and the rooms above. Anara continues straightening up the downstairs, moving a high-backed bench in front of the armor to scrub the floor. Anara, can I ask Sergio what you're looking for? Maybe I could help you. Clavides, are these all the rooms in the castle? No secret passages? Anara, laughing. Oh, Sergio, what would Sidura Kina Telvani Hordolf Zir want with secret passages? Clavides, looking at the armor. Your master is a big man. Anara, laughing. Oh, Sergio, don't tease. That's giant armor, just for decoration. My master slew that giant ten years ago, and kind of keeps it for a souvenir. Clavides. That's right. I remember hearing something about that when I first took my post here. It was someone named Seer who killed the giant, but I didn't think the first name was Hordalf. Memory fades, I'm afraid. What was the giant's name? Anara. I'm afraid I don't remember, Sergio. Clavides. I do. It was Torfang. I got out of Torfang's shield. Anara. I don't understand, Sergio. Torfang's shield? Clavides runs down the stairs and examines the armor. Clavides. Sulcarifa said something about getting out of Torfang's shield. I thought he was just raving, out of his mind. Anara. But he ain't got a shield, Sergio. Clavides pushes the high-backed bench out of the way, revealing the large mounted shield at the base of the armor. Clavides. Yes, he does. You covered it up with that bench. Anara. I didn't do it on purpose, Sergio. I was just cleaning. I see that armor every day, Sergio, and Vivek, I swear I ain't never noticed the shield before. Clavides. It's fine, Anara. I believe you. Clavides pushes on the shield and it pulls back to reveal a tunnel down. Clavides. It appears that Sidura Kina Telvani Hordalf Seer does have a need for a secret passage. Could you get me a torch? Anara. Bevec, I ain't never seen that before. Anara takes a torch from the wall and hands it to Clavides. Clavides enters the tunnel. Clavides, wait here. Anara watches Clavides disappear down the tunnel. She appears agitated and finally runs for the front door. When she opens it, Aulis, an Argonian lieutenant in the Imperial Guard, is standing at the entrance. She screams. Aulis, I'm sorry to frighten you. Anara, not now. Go away. Aulis. I'm afraid the captain wouldn't like that, miss. Anara, you're with the captain? Blessed mother. Clavides comes out of the tunnel, white-faced. It takes him a few moments to speak. Ullis, captain, what's down there? Clavides, to Anara, did you know your master's a necromancer, that your cellar is filled with bodies? Anara faints. Ullis carries her to the bench and lays her down. Ullis, let me see, Sergio. Clavides, you'll see soon enough. We're going to need every soldier from the post here to cart away all the corpses. Alice, I've seen enough battles, but I've never seen anything like this. No two are alike. Kajidi, Slode, Dunmer, Cyrodiil, Breton, Nord, burned alive, poisoned, electrified, melted, torn apart, turned inside out, ripped to shreds, and sewn back up together. Alice, you think the Ashlander escaped? That's what happened? Clavides, I don't know. Why would someone do something like this, Ullis? There is a knock at the door. Clavides answers it. A young Argonian woman, Zolasa, is standing, holding a package and a letter. Zolasa. Good morning. You're not Lord Seer, are you? Clavides. No. What do you have there? Zolasa. A letter and a package I'm supposed to deliver to him. Will he be back shortly? Clavides. I don't believe so. Who gave you the package to deliver? Zolasa. My teacher at the college, Kiva Warvin. He has a bad leg, so he asked me to bring these to his lordship. Actually, to tell you the truth, I was supposed to deliver them last night, but I was busy. Alice, greetings, sister. We'll give the package to his lordship when we see him. Zolasa, ah, hail, brother. I had heard there was a handsome Argonian in Scathanud. Unfortunately, I promised Kim Warvin that I'd deliver the package directly to his lordship's hands. I'm already late, I can't just... Clavides. We're Imperial Guard, miss. We will take the package and the letter. Zolasa reluctantly hands Clavides the letter and the package. She turns to go. Ullis. You're at the college if we need to see you? <coughs> Zolasa. Yes. Fair tidings, brother. Ullis. Good night, sister. Clavides opens the package as Zolasa exits. It is a book with many loose sheets. Clavides. It appears we found the missing book, delivered to our very hands. Clavides begins to read the book silently to himself. Ullis, to himself, very pleased. Another Argonian in Scathanud. 
and a pretty one at that. I hope we weren't too rude to her. I'm tired of all these women with their smooth, wet skin. It would be wonderful if we could meet when I'm off duty. <coughs> While Ellis talks, he opens the letter and reads it. Ellis continued. She looks like she's from the South, like me. You know, Argonians from Northern Black Marsh are much less. Ellis continues reading, transfixed by the letter. Clavides skips to the back of the book and reads the last sentences. Clavides reading. In black ink, the Kajidi male showed surprisingly little fortitude to a simple lightning spell, but I've had interesting physiological results with a medium-level acid spell cast slowly over several days. In red ink on the margins. Yes, I see. Was the acid spell cast uniformly over the entire body of the subject? In black ink. The Nord female was subjected to 16 hours of a frost spell, which eventually crystallized her into a state of suspended animation, from which she eventually expired. Not so the Nord male, nor the Ashlander male, who lapsed into their comas much earlier, but then recovered. The Ashlander then tried to escape, but I restrained him. The Nord then had an interesting chemical overreaction to a simple fire spell and expired. See the accompanying illustration in red ink. Yes, I see. The pattern of boils and lesions suggests some sort of internal incineration, perhaps caused by the combination of a short burst of flame following a longer session of frost. It's such a shame I can't come to see the experiment personally, but I compliment you on your excellent notation. In black ink. Thank you for the suggestion about slowly poisoning my maid, Anara. The dosages you've suggested have had fascinating results, eroding her memory very subtly. I intend to increase it exponentially and see how long it is before she notices. Speaking of which, it is a pity that I haven't any Argonian subjects, but the slave traders promised me some healthy specimens in the autumn. I should like to test their metabolism in comparison to elves and humans. It's my theory that a medium-level lightning spell cast in a continuous wave on an Argonian wouldn't be lethal for several hours at least, similar to my results with the Cyrodiilic female and, of course, the giant. In red ink, it'd be a shame to wait until autumn to see. Ullis reading the letter. In red ink, here is your Argonian. Please let me know the results. It's signed, Kima Warvim. Clavides, by Kinnereth, this isn't necromancy. It's destruction. Kima Warvim and Kina Telvani Hordalfzir haven't been experimenting with the death, but with the limits of magical torture. Ullis, the letter isn't addressed to Kina Telvani Hordalfzir. It's addressed to Sedura Ayachilla's ear. His wife, do you think? Clavides. Ayachilla. That was the Telvani of the Zir family who I heard about in connection with the giant slaying. We'd best get the maid out of here. She'll need to go to a healer. Clavides wakes up Anara. She appears disoriented. Anara. What's happening? Who are you? Clavides. Don't worry. Everything is going to be fine. We're going to take you to a healer. Ullis. Do you need a coat, Ayachilla? Anara. Thank you, no, I'm not cold. Anara slash Ayachilla stops, realizing that she's been caught. Clavides and Ullis unsheathe their blades. Clavides, you have black ink on your fingers, your ladyship. Ullis, and when you saw me at the door, you thought I was the Argonian your friend Warbim sent over. That's why you said, not now, go away. Anara slash Ayachilla. You're much more observant than Anara. She never did understand what was happening, even when I tripled the poison spell and she expired in what I observed as considerable agony. Ullis, what were you going to use on me first, lightning or fire? Anara slash Ayachilla. Lightning. I find fire to be too unpredictable. As she speaks, the flames and the torches extinguish. The stage is utterly dark. There is the sound of a struggle, swords clanging. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashes out, and there is silence. From the darkness, Anara slash Ayachilla speaks. Anara slash Ayachilla. Fascinating. There are several more flashes of lightning as the curtain closes. The end. Mm, there you go. Alright, we're done here. So, let's go off the boat. actually have a reason to visit Lakeview Manor. Since that one dead goat coughed up a pair of horns. Then I think I'll go to Whiterun to offload. It just makes sense. Since I have to go to Whiterun 
anyway to turn in the quest. Go back to Aww. bed. It's past your bedtime. Dresser's empty too. Let's just hmm, drop off our goat horns. Oh, those are still quest items, so I guess I'll hold on to all five for now. Camilla still won't talk during the night. It's all right. Let's just get out of here. I'm trying to think. Nothing in there is stolen, so I should be fine to just offload it right now. For the boy, I'm a sword. Take a good look around. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Every some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. No poison resist. But look at that. Suddenly he's got eight goat horns. Where the hell did that come from? But I'll take it. Now I only need 28 more of those jokers. Not bad. Just keep one set of feathers. I'll run over to Arcadia's and make that potion. Do come back. One reset needed. Easy enough. What do you think you're I need take a look. Is he suddenly respawning goat horns now? Nope. How odd, I wonder where that came from. No matter. Remember, I'll give you it's done. Let's pop into Arcadia's, where we will be able to remove. I'd be a lot warmer, a lot happier. Human heart from my ingredient you know list. You like. As we learn, the fourth and final effect: frenzy. Awesome. What do you need? Take a look. Let's sell her the potion. Come back anytime if you need help. And let's go turn in our quest. Have a fascination with fire. Alteration to 98. Or cast your fancy magic someday, says. Uh oh. This doesn't look right. Hmm. You're someone who can get things done. I like that. The silver hand. They finally had the nerve to attack your bastard. We got most of them, but I think a few stragglers made it out. These ones are probably... The silver hand. They finally... The 
nerve to attack your... We got most of them, but I think a few stragglers. Well, the Silver Hand have attacked your Vasker. Looks like those three are it for outside. Let's head in. Where have you been? I was doing Codlac's bidding. I hope it was important, because it means you weren't here to defend him. The Silver Hand. They finally found enough courage to attack your Vasker. We fought them off. But the old man, Godlack, he's dead. Was anyone else hurt? No. But they made off with all our fragments of Wuthrad. But you and I are going to reclaim them. We will bring the battle to their chief cap. There will be none left living to tell their stories. Only songs of your Vasker will be sung. We will avenge Kodlak. And they will know terror before the end. Completed. Blood's honor. Started. Purity of revenge. Retrieve the fragments of Uthrad. Optional. Wipe out the silver hand. So, Blood's Honor. I killed the Glenmoral Witches at the behest of Codlack Whitebane, but he was killed by the Silver Hand before I could return. Purity of Revenge. Vilkas has come with me to avenge the death of Codlack by wiping out the Silver Hand. Sounds good. Let's loot the other bodies. There's Codlack's corpse. Looks like Aethys is injured being tended to. Farkas and Yada are looking over that body. There's another silver hand corpse. And notice the fragments of Uthrad are gone. Oh, there's one more dead silver hand. Uh -huh. the Empire surrendered we have a little more offloading to do. They shaved us all. And then I am going to go ahead Make them bleed. Don't leave any of them alive. Make them bleed. Want to hear a little Nord wisdom? It's offloaded. Well met, Nord. Take a good look around. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Ever trinkets, odds and ends, that sort of thing. Sell off everything we got from those clowns. Almost. Do right. come back. Trinkets, odds and ends, that Those sort of thing. No. Go horns? No. Remember, I'll give you the best deal. I have a sneaking suspicion that the hearthfire ingredients respawn on the 10 day timeline. Like the cell they're in. As opposed to the merchant inventory. So, I'm gonna go check Fulcreth right quick. To see if Soloth is selling a new batch. Since I know that he has fully respawned. Then I'm gonna head to Lakeview for two reasons. Only one of them. Don't which go is setting the place on fire, buddy. Okay? Well met. Some may call this junk. Let's see. Me, I call them treasures. No. Goat horns? 
Yes, six of them. Awesome. Now I only need 22. Steal anything from my ship. Let's head to Lakeview now. You'll find my brother's sword. I've never checked to see if Kinola sells goat horns. She is a general merchant. <laughs> oh goodness, I'm getting a little carried away. But, as always, I like to not have to worry about it anymore. Let's bring my boy Vilgus in here. Hope she's still awake. But I'll wait till morning if she's not. She is. Hello, my love. Back from some adventure, I bet. We have a cozy little prophet. Trinkets, odds and ends, that sort of thing. Poison resistance. No. Goat horns. No. Okay. Goodbye, my love. Let's drop off our goat horns. And... Let's head out to our carriage driver. Now, I am not going to explore the town yet. And I won't for some time. But we're going to take the carriage to Dawnstar. And we're going to do one Where do you want thing to go? inside the town. Climb and back and we'll be off. Oh, steady. There's a woman in here named Baytild, who we eventually have to kill, but I will go ahead and take Dawnstar off the discovered locations list. They say that vampires attacked the Hall of the Vigil, burned it to the ground. I guess we can listen to a couple of introductory conversations while we're here. Divine sake, Skull. Who do you think we're threatening with our old war wounds? We're not soldiers anymore. Your man Horik is wearing his old Legion armor. What should I make of that? He's proud of his service, Skald. The Legion taught us loyalty. Man, I'm burning everything down, down, do you? This isn't over. I catch you sending one letter to General Tullius. I'll have you both executed. Baytild is right here. She's eventually the target. Ironbreaker mine is three times the worth of that Quicksilver mine. And it's fathead. She's eventually the target of a Dark Brotherhood quest. And if you don't talk to her in advance, you have no chance to do the favor for her. Which is really simple. Hey, watch it. Just mine ore. So I'm just gonna grab one iron ore and sell it to Baytild so that I can get that favor done. I'm only doing this because I happen to be at Dawnstar. Come to Dawnstar at a strange time frame. You're wrong to come here, stranger. No rest in Dawnstar. I have iron ore to sell. I'll buy everything you've dug up. And there. Done the mine ore quest. Until next time. Now where are we going? Over here. To the Driftshade Refuge. Now that I've taken care of that, I'm gonna make my way out of town. Heard what you did, killing those foul witches. Well done. <clears throat> There's really not a good road to Driftshade that I'm aware of. I think the easiest thing is to go south and then go west. So that's 
basically what I'm going to do. I don't really want to explore this area yet. I kind of want to get to Drift Shade, and that's it. We will do more exploring later. This is a trail. Is this the one I want? Yes. barely see it. But it is there. Oh. Well, there's a better one. What do you know? I'm not going the right way anymore. I thought something seemed off. Seen, yeah, we've seen one of these before. It's inside a cave and fall <laughs> Here it is. Drift Shade Refuge, the headquarters of the Silver Hand. Nope. Not so. My mistake. <laughs> this is the wrong place. Military forts out here. Let's go up behind this place without attracting any attention from the inside, ideally. Oh, Vilkus, no! Come on, buddy. Run away! I'm not about to convince Vilkus to leave them alone. Jesus Christ, Marie. Let's at least get back here. <sighs> Maybe let's not even worry about the roads. Let's just go for the straight shot to Drift Shade. Oh, God. Thank God for the auto -sales. You come to Dawn Star at the strange time frame. You're wrong to come here. I'll buy everything you've dug up. There we go. Friends like you are hard. Right. Fine. And very valuable to me. Let's just make a beeline in the southeast. Should help us avoid most entanglements, I think. Because I am not 
trying to explore the pale yet. Just trying to finish the companion's quest line as quickly as is possible. Okay, this time, I'm not lying to you, this is the headquarters of the Silver Hand. All of the surviving members are holed up here, at the Driftshade Refuge. And in retaliation for them killing our dear leader, Codlack Whitemane, in the next video, Vilkus and I will wipe them out. Until then, this has been Let's Play Skyrim. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.